Voiceovers, how to speak naturally. What am I talking about? Well, some people sound much different between when they're ad-libbing, making stuff up, when they're chatting between each other from two meters away, you know, and from when they're reading from a script or a book. In everyday life, it's generally no issue. In fact, young children like being read to at story time. Once upon a time, there was a huge ice palace, in an exaggerated way, to show that the words are being read and to overemphasize learning points. It helps children learn new words. That's fine. But if you're auditioning in this manner, delivering a script to an ad agency to voice a network telescript, you'll be thrown out after the first line. To speak naturally and not like you're just reading words off the script is a skill that all actors need to learn to do. I have to say this video is not the most exciting or visual I've done for you, but I assure it could be the most beneficial. So listen up. You see, if it sounds like you're reading, even though everyone really knows that you are reading from a script, it's a big no-no in the world of voiceover. And of course, TV presenters who are reading teleprompters in the studio also need to sound natural. If you think this is an easy issue, it doesn't really affect you, this thing. Well, you're lucky. But for even experienced voice talents, the uh, sounding like it's red issue does rear its ugly head when you're in a long directed voiceover session and the agency argue the style amongst themselves. Yeah, you've been in those, haven't you? And they demand endless takes from you. And that freshness and natural feel of the read at take 26 wears off fast, doesn't it? <laughs> The weird thing is that some voiceovers who really sound like they are reading don't realize it. So here's a test you can do. Switch on an audio recorder when you're with a friend. Now ask your pal to ask you a really random question like, what did you think of the film on TV last night? Or why did you choose your car? Or something like that, anything, but something you couldn't have prepared for, all right? Record it. After your reply, play it back and transcribe it. In other words, write it out word for word. Then start the recorder again, and this time you need to read your actual words again, but this time from the script. Now you'll have two recordings. Firstly, the ad-libbed reply, and then you reading your reply. You'll have no excuse over scripts not written in your voice style now, will you, eh? The words were your own. So do you notice the differences between the two recordings? The main differences I think you'll find will be of the imperfections in the first one, and that's good. Humans are imperfect. We have characters, we have personalities, we have moods, we have emotions, we have, we have breaths. And these AI enhanced text-to-speech computer programs that are supposed to take over the jobs of us voiceovers can't do what we do. And computers will never be as good as us humans, certainly not in our lifetimes. The computer voice is just too perfect. Now, to sound natural when reading a script, I'm not suggesting that you stumble all over it and leave gaps and breathe in the wrong place and so on, but a small but important amount of intelligent imperfection added to your performance will vastly improve the sound of it to the target audience. Now, what I've just said there is so important. Target audience. It's key to all of this. See, the imperfections have to come from understanding who the script is meant for. You need to get inside the head of the target audience, whether they're academics, they're buyers of goods or services, kids, hobbyists, whatever. Know the kind of people you're talking to, and then a natural empathy should grow between your voice and them as you read the script. You'll discover as you tune into your audience that certain words on your script will glow a little bit more than others. You'll find some words you'll naturally emphasize. Some sections you'll find yourself smiling as you speak, while you become naturally serious in other parts. If you're allowed to change the script to colloquialize it more with contractions, then please do it. So, for example, you would change, you would change in the script to you'd change, and so on. Now, if it's not happening for you naturally, don't worry. Just go through the script, mark it up. You underline key words to emphasize. You mark in pauses and taking out pauses where it looks like one thought could suddenly and naturally jerk excitedly into the next, eh? Let me go to the voice booth and show you a few examples. The words on the screen I could read perfectly acceptably like this. And that would have been the end to it 
if, indeed, he was true to his word. But it sounds like I'm reading, it sounds like I'm a bit bored and not that human. If I wanted that to make it sound like it was much more natural, almost like a drama natural, I would push a word. Do you know what word that would be? It would be the if word. Now listen what happens if I push that if. And that would have been the end to it, if indeed he was true to his word. As if I just thought of that second section. And so I push the if, put a little chuckle on the indeed, and it sounds much more natural. Now, that's just what I would do to that particular thing if it was right for that particular part of voiceover. But it's just to give you an example, okay? Let's move on to this one. The condition is called prosopagnosia, also called face blindness. Again, perfectly all right, but it's just straight narration. To make it sound a bit more human, you would push the also. The condition is called prosopagnosia, also called face blindness. So I was a bit more casual, but I pushed the also, as if you've just thought of something new. What about this one? He carried out some further research, and even went so far, as to call the initial theory as missing detail. The pushed word there? Yes, it's the link word. Again, it's and. So if it was right for this particular sentence in the particular context, I would read it like this. He carried out some further research and even went so far as to call the initial theory as missing detail. Now you notice there the word detail didn't actually come down in tone. Most sentences do in voiceover, in narration it does, as it comes to the end of a sentence, like that. But I didn't, it was in midair, as missing detail. It sort of floats around, because that's what humans do. So you can experiment with that as well. Don't make every end of sentence come down all the time. I'll read that to you again the way I did the second time. He carried out some further research and even went so far as to call the initial theory as missing detail. And you sort of tail off a bit because people do that in real life. Listen to how you speak when you're chatting to a friend. Listen to people in the street, how they talk as well. You need to get elements of that into your voiceover to make it more natural and more colloquial. People have often disagreed with my theory, some quite strongly. So the push word here is the first word of the second sentence, again as if it's something new you've just thought of. People have often disagreed with my theory, some quite strongly. So you push it a little bit, eh? And the very last example here, I am happy in my work, at home, and in life in general but I always knew there was something missing. That is really red, isn't it? Well, first of all, you get rid of I am. It's I'm happy, all right, to make it more personal and natural. I wouldn't push the but, although it would work like that. I would simply give a little gap and change the tone after the but. So I would read this more naturally if it was appropriate. Again, I have to say that like this. I'm happy in my work, at home, and in life in general. But I always knew there was something missing. You see, so the first part was straight narration. The second part was more an inner questioning, something deeper I'm trying to find inside to express. I hope that's useful. So to sum up here, really try to understand the script, identify the target audience. If it's a truly factual script or a training duration, you need to own the script. You are the expert. I know you're just a voiceover being paid to read it, but look, you are the expert on this. People listening really want to learn from you, so determine the key parts of the scripts to emphasize and to make very clear. Then add subtle but important imperfections and emotions to really help you record the script you've been given in the most natural way possible. Well, I hope that's been useful to you. More tips, tricks, and courses for voice talents you can find at voiceovermasterclass.com. Well, pop over there now if you've got time. We'll have the kettle on for you. All the best.